live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Citrix Synergy Atlanta 2019. Brought to you by Citrix. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend coming to you live from day one of our coverage of Citrix Synergy in Atlanta, Georgia. We're very pleased to welcome Citrix's Chief People Officer, Donna Kimmel, EVP and yep. Chief People Officer. Thank you so much for joining Keith and me this afternoon. My pleasure, it's great to be here, Lisa and Keith, thank you. This has been, I was telling you before we went live, Donna, this has been a great event. This is our first day of coverage, but the keynote really kicked things off very, uh, in a way that it's so relatable, just showing workforce and the fact, some of the stats you guys gave were, were staggering, the fact that power users are who software, enterprise software is designed for, but that's 1% of the users. Exactly. Or things like seven trillion dollars is wasted a year, and Keith's brought this up on a number of our interviews, of wasted productivity. There's a huge need for employee experience to become a C-level business imperative. Yep. Talk to us about that from Citrix's, Citrix's point of view. Absolutely. You know, employee experience is incredibly important. You, when I think about the concept, uh, it is really about people and technology together. And uh, we, we can't do great things in the workplace if we don't have the right tools uh, you know, at our fingertips. And technology really supports that. But employee experience is also very broad. It's all encompassing. When we think about employee experience, it's everything from when somebody starts uh, or applies to a company, what kind of experience are they having with that company? Uh, what is their interview process like? What is their pre-hire process like? What happens when uh, they come for their onboarding? Uh, do, are they experiencing the company the way, that they, the way that they should? And then it's about their career journey. So employee experience is incredibly uh, important and it's incredibly uh, pervasive. But I, I, I think it also starts with understanding why it matters to companies. And I think when you look at why it matters to companies, companies can't be successful without people. It's people that are the ones that are driving results. It's people that are the ones that are collaborating and bringing the culture of that company to life. And it's people that are, um, that are uh, driving new product design and, thinking about, and uh, thinking about what customers need and putting customers first. And companies are successful because of the people within it. So we need to create experiences that make a difference. So as we talk about those experiences, when I think of Citrix, I think of Citrix in a traditional sense. You know, you front end Workday, you front end uh, uh, HRM from SAP, those solutions. So as Citrix starts to engage more with HR directly, Talk to me about kind of that value conversation your uh, Citrix is having with HR and how Citrix acts value versus a company that specific fo focus is creating HR software. Exactly. So we're creating software that enables employees and people in an organization, talent in an organization to be successful, to do their best work on a daily basis. So though we are not creating HR software per se, what we are creating is employee experience, and it's employee experience through the technology. So when employees have the right tools at their fingertips in a way that cuts out the um, uh, con continual searching, you know, as one of the things that we talked about um, uh, this morning in the keynote, was all about how much time is wasted. At least 25% of an employee's time is wasted searching or context switching between applications, not being able to use the applications to their fullest. And we recognize there's a fair amount that employees need to do that are very task oriented. And if you can automate those and bring them to the, to, to the employee in a, in, a, in, in a very intelligent way, right? Using the analytics, you also heard about that this morning as well. You know, the analytics get to know the employee. So it's more personal. So you get what you need to at your fingertips, you can do it more quickly, more easily, and then really focus on some of the more critical things that are going to help you be successful as an employee. You bring up the personal aspect, and I think personalization is becoming more and more a critical element of, because as consumers, we expect that. Yeah, and so we're exactly. starting to see the influences of, of the consumerization of IT, and it really is something that can be a big differentiator to attract talent and retain talent, yeah. which is also a business imperative. I'm glad though that you brought up, hey, employee experience isn't just 
okay, this intelligent experience and I can have access to all my apps. It's, it starts with the hiring process, Absolutely. the interviewing, the recruiting. Uh, we were talking about our different onboarding experiences, Keith and I were at lunch, and how that, that really can set the tone exactly. of an employee with their employer, and you're right. It's not just about the technology needs to be an enabler, but it's got to start from even the recruitment. Exactly. When I step back and I think about uh, employee experience, I, it brings me back to the concept of the, the concepts that we've been talking about for a while now regarding the future of work. It's really about a company having the right culture, creating the right uh, physical space and digital space, and then also the technology that's used. And again, a culture uh, can be a real differentiator for an organization, just like we know that the talent is a differentiator for companies. But when you think about uh, the culture, it really speaks to what's important to human beings. What's important to employees? Are they socially involved? Is their product meaningful, right? Is the, what they're doing uh, meaningful to the community, to, uh, to, to the customers that they're serving? Uh, so are, they, are we tapping into what's meaningful to people? Are employees being given opportunities for flexibility and collaboration? Are they being given opportunities for choice? And that also brings me back to the, what you were talking about in terms of personalization. Uh, if we think about the workforce, we right now, at least at Citrix, we have about five different generations in our workforce. And you might be able to look across all those different generations and um, look for trends and different ways that generations might work, but the reality is, it's about the individual. It's truly about understanding that individual's choice for working anywhere, anyhow, anyhow um, anyway, um, on any device. That's what's really going to drive a difference. That becomes part of the, part of the culture. Uh, if you have the right, again, grounded values, you have the, the, the right environment that you're creating, that is part of the appeal to employees. And then you try to create the right space and you want to create the right physical space because when employees are in the workforce um, and when they come into the office, you want it to feel like a place where they can collaborate, where they can change and move and move into private space if they need it or quiet space if they need it or opportunities for, as we say, collisions. You know, at the coffee machine where all of a sudden new ideas come out because you're generating um, thoughts and conversation. So space, physical space, and all of, uh, all of that movement also mimics our, our personal worlds, right? We get up and we move around to different kind of spaces throughout the day. We want our workspace to feel the same way. And then the other piece to that is um, technology. And are we creating the right technological tools that enable employees to have that freedom and that choice around the kinds of devices they're using and the spaces that where they're working in uh, to really be able to bring their best selves to the workplace and contribute? Because ultimately, we want to be part of successful organizations. So it's a combination of all of those for me in terms of um, the, the question that you were just asking. So you're an EVP of a nice size software company. And some of these things you've had to put into practice. The Citrix is a 30-year-old com com company. I think I'm aging myself because I've done a few Citrix deployments early in my own yeah. career. As you start to pivot, you know, you're part of these executive level conversations saying we're going to invest in AI, machine learning, and you look at this job market for AI, um, ML data scientists. It's a tight market. It's really hard to attract this talent. Uh, while Florida is lovely, that may not be the place for ML or AI talent, but more specifically, this type of talent is, might be spread across the world. That's right. What types of changes have you had to oversee inside of Citrix to attract and retain that talent? Absolutely. I think it's a great point because I think not only are we at Citrix doing it, but many other companies are, are looking at the same kind of question, which is, where do we find the best talent and how do we enable that talent anywhere around the world to successfully contribute to our company? And because the, the, it is so challenging to find talent, we do need to be more flexible as organizations. We need to look at um, sort of distributed office locations. We need to look at opportunities for people to be able to work from their homes. We look at a total labor force like gig workers in addition to you know, contractors and, and employee base. So our technology enables that. 
And I think that's one of the great selling points of having people join Citrix is you are part of the movement of helping organizations be flexible. You're part of helping to drive that kind of employee experience so you can hire anyone from anywhere around the world in order to help you, uh, you know, achieve the business results that you're looking for. In the four years that you've been EVP and Chief People Officer, how have you helped this culture to evolve? As Keith mentioned, this is a 30 year young <coughs> company yep. and cultural change is challenging. Again, but even if we think about it in our personal lives, change is hard. Yeah. What are some of the, the key strategies that you've employed to help facilitate that cultural change? You know, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, when I joined about three and a half years ago, we were embarking on a transformation at the company and part of that transformation was taking a look at where we needed to evolve um, from a product strategy perspective and from meeting our customer needs uh, in a very different way. And the more we got out there and listened to our customers, it helped solidify what we needed to do from a strategy perspective. What we also realized is you'll never be able to accomplish your strategy without the right people and you need the right culture and the right set of values that are, are, are going to underpin everything you do as a company. So we took some very strong values that were already part of, uh, part of Citrix and kind of modernized them, brought them into words that had meaning for our employees. So we did a, a, quite a few feedback sessions, surveys and things, and gathered. And we really focus um, from a strong values perspective on integrity, respect, uh, curiosity, courage, and unity. And those words have incredible meaning for us in terms of what we're doing to not only transform the markets and the, the products and the markets that we're in, but how do we transform our, our own workplace to continue to drive an employee experience that lives out those values in that culture. So it underpins everything that we do. So let's talk about lessons that can be applied from Citrix, a big company, to smaller companies, because Citrix has customers across the spectrum from the small uh, shop with less than 10 people to companies with tens of thousands of people. Is employee experience something that only large companies sh should consider or is this something that, you know, as entrepreneurs like myself, I only have a couple of employees, should I be thinking about employee experience in a, in a, in a specific way? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, when I think about why, again, why employee experience is so important, I think first, it's because it's about people and it's about humanity. And we, and, and why it matters to any business, regardless of your size, is that it's about people first and people first are going to help any business be able to achieve its, its uh, goals and its results. The technology that we're creating also is what we call general purpose. It is for individuals, to enable individuals to be successful in their workplace. So I do believe strongly it is for any size uh, organization and the principles ring true, whether you're a small business or whether you're a large business. I know my, my sister also um, you know, has, has a small business um, and uh, the team members that work with her, very small business, the team members that work with her need to feel that same vibrancy of what she's trying to create for her, her, her clients. Uh, and so I think it's the same for, for any size business culture, values, grounding, experience that you can create to enable those employees to feel like they're part of what you're doing and they're part of your success. We talked with Simon Bray earlier and I learned a new acronym, TOMO. Yeah. I love that, <laughs> yeah, total motivation. Great. Exactly. How do you measure cultural transformation within Citrix? What are some of those key, is there sort of like an internal NPS sort of survey or other things that you guys do to go, we're going in the right direction here? We do, absolutely. Um, it's no doubt uh, challenging to measure. We do an employee net promoter score and we do an engagement score. So the net promoter score that we do on a quarterly basis and our full engagement survey we do uh, on an annual basis. And since we started our transformation uh, you know, three and a half years ago, our net promoter score has gone up dramatically. Um, and we are nearing the 50% mark, which, which is very high for employee net promoter scores. So we feel really proud about the constant movement in the right direction around that score and the same thing with our engagement scores. And we've become certified two years in a row through Great Places to Work. So again, that movement in the right direction is telling us that our employees do feel connected to who we are, what we're doing, and that they feel part of uh, driving those, those solutions and those results. So I was looking at some of the Citrix uh, revenue numbers over the weekend. 
looks like a lot of things are up. Subscription revenue, SaaS revenue, workspace revenue, and employee satisfaction is up as well. Absolutely, and we're proud of all of it. You know, we, we, uh, we talk in a very positive way. David, our CEO, always talks about up and to the right. Uh, and we are, all of our measures have been up and to the right on a consistent basis. From an employee perspective and from a business results perspective. And it takes every single employee to be able to do that. What are you most excited about as we wrap up here? I know we're so early in Synergy 2019, but like I was saying, we've had such an exciting start to our time here. What are you excited about when this is all done in terms of feedback that you're hoping and expecting to hear from the employees? You know, I, I think probably one of the most exciting things for me is to be in the field that I'm in, human resources, focusing on people and focusing on talent and recognizing that the product that, that we are putting out there is making a difference from an employee experience perspective. So being part of that, um, that vision, that mission, I think is incredibly exciting. So we can live it internally as well as help our customers uh, live it within their own environment. And that, uh, that connection, I think, is incredibly powerful and really meaningful to be a part of. It can be such a differentiator as well if your customers see, ah, there's a Citrix on Citrix story Absolutely. and you're transforming using your own technology. That's yeah. one of the best brand validations that you can get, right? Ab absolutely, it helps us tell the story with our customers and it's a great selling point for new employees that are attracted to coming to work for us. Become part of the movement and the change of really driving employee experience and driving that partnership through, through technology. Donna, it's been so great to have you on theCUBE with Keith Thank and you. me helping to expand at least my perspective of employee experience. Yep. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, likewise. For Thank Keith you. Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from our day one coverage, Citrix Synergy 2019. Thanks for watching. <laughs>